February's Heart Month is over, but students at St. Mary's are creating awareness of keeping the heart healthy. Anna Stanislaw was at the last day of Jump Rope for Heart and has more. Almost 400 students skipped together for a good cause. The Skipathon wasn't just about raising money, but it was also on educating youth to stay active. This is important to me because my grandpa has some heart problems, and I feel like this is going to help and make it a little better. We've been raising money for the past three weeks, and so the kids go out and get sponsors for, uh, for raising money for Jump Rope for Heart. According to the Heart and Stroke Foundation, more than 26% of Canadian children and youth are overweight or obese, putting them at risk for heart disease. It's a win-win situation. The kids are active, they stay healthy, they're raising money to help others to get healthy. And I even joined in on the fun. Close to $10,000 has been raised so far. The majority of the proceeds will go to the Heart and Stroke Foundation. Faith and Nicole even had some exercising tips. Just do jumping jacks, I guess. Yep. Just start off easy and don't like push yourself, but don't push yourself over the limit because you don't want to get hurt. Anna Stanislaw, New Cap News. The weather may not be the greatest but in this installment of What's Happening. Michael Gordon takes a look at some weekend events that will make you forget about the snow. Hey everyone, although it doesn't look like it outside, it's time to start worrying about your landscape. Great news though, the Home Garden Sport and Leisure Showcase is happening this weekend at the Lloyd Axe Grounds. They've got such people as Cody Robbins from Live to Hunt coming in. Tickets are just $7 and guess what, kids 12 and under, they're getting in for free. So come down this weekend and check out the showcase. And this weekend you also have a chance to catch some world class Ukrainian dancing at the 8th Annual Ukrainian Dancing on the Border Festival at the Big Juba. They've got dancers from all over Alberta and Saskatchewan coming. And hey guess what, you want a little bit of Ukrainian merchandise? They got some vendors on site for that too, be sure not to miss. And to rock up your weekend, we've got a great giveaway. Mumford & Sons, Road to Red Rocks. It features great live performances from some of their classical songs like Little Lion Man and some of their newer singles like I Will Wait. If you want a chance at this, all you got to do is email your name and daytime phone number to tvcontest at newcap.ca. We want to say thanks to John at Universal Music Canada for setting us up with the DVD. And finally, you can catch a great show tonight accompanied by a great supper. Jerry Hawks, great country music impersonator, is going to be joining us at the Legacy Centre. You can still get your tickets. Well, whatever you choose to do this weekend, I hope you have a great one. I'm Michael Gordon, and that's what's happening. If you're looking to adopt a furry, a fury, a furry friend, not fury, keep in mind that some animals can't be adopted into certain areas. In this month's Humane Habits, we find out why. Have you ever wondered why the SPCA does not adopt animals into the same area they came from when impounded by a bylaw officer? There are numerous reasons why this protocol is in place. When a dog is impounded by a bylaw officer, the fees owing are much higher than if it were brought in by a member of the public. This is because the animal was caught by the authority while the animal was running at large, which is illegal. Therefore, the fines owing are city fines, not SPCA fines. The fines owing at minimum would be $55 and could get into the multiple hundreds depending on whether the animal is licensed, spayed or neutered, how long the animal sits in the shelter before being claimed, and if we had to vaccinate it. If that animal is not claimed by its owner and the fines are not paid, the SPCA needs to pay those city fines. Sadly, more often than not, we see the fines owing are higher than the cost of our adoption rates. So the main reason we do not adopt impounded animals back into the area they came from is so the owner cannot avoid their fines by just adopting back their own animal. We would also like to avoid any unwelcome confrontation for the new owner if they are walking their newly adopted dog and the previous owner happens to approach the adopter. Another reason for this rule is to ensure the newly adopted animal does not return to their previous home if they happen to get loose. The SPCA cares very much about the animals that are brought into the shelter and we want to see them all go home. If your animal ever goes missing, be sure to call the SPCA.